Hello everyone, my name is Nisha Howard and I'm a health policy and management major in the CUNY School of Public Health. Today I'll be going over my capstone project, which is entitled A Policy Analysis of HR 40, Commission to Study and Develop Reparations Proposals for African Americans Act. So in this presentation, we're going to go through a brief overview of my project. And then we'll get into the background, which will discuss the historical context. We will define what reparations are. We will explain why, repra why reparations are needed. And then we will identify and discuss the HR 40 policy. We will then get into the landscape, which will discuss key stakeholders and their stance on reparations for Black Americans. And then we will discuss the results and the key findings of the HR 40 analysis. The objective of this policy analysis was to analyze the HR 40 policy based on the cost to the federal government, the political feasibility, and um, the intended health impact in efforts to determine its effectiveness at um, improving health for Black Americans. Um, I used the policy analysis methods described in the Essentials of Health Policy and Law. Um, as the basis to analyze the HR 40 bill through a public health lens. And I used available data using Google and Google Scholar um, to gather scholar resources for the analysis. Um, based off the analysis, it was determined that structural flaws of the HR 40 policy could, aff could affect the health impact that it intends to have. Um, the ambiguity of the policy and the lack of transparency on the processes required to fulfill the bill's agendas are a cause for concern. The political feasibility the political feasibility could impact the success of the bill as well, and the cost impact on the government was um, determined to be unknown. So let's get into the historical context a little bit. We're going to begin at the Atlantic slave trade, which started off as an international uh, practice, but was implemented in the U.S. in 1619. Uh, during this time, approximately 450,000 Africans were transported to America by way of the Middle Passage. And though this ended in the U.S. in 1808, it just transitioned into the domestic slave trade. During this time, chattel slavery was created and it was backed by federal policies. Federal policies established the idea that race is the sole reason for lifelong and generational enslavement of people. And these policies were known as slave codes. After the Civil War, slave codes turned into black codes, which continued to uphold white supremacy. Though they varied state to state, the idea was that black people were inferior to white people. Black codes were dismantled by the 14th and 15th Amendments during the Reconstruction Era, and though progression occurred, it was short-lived, and Jim Crow laws reinforced racism and violence against black Americans. So what we're seeing here is that historically, the government has played a significant role in the oppression of black Americans. The legal enforcement of racist policies continue to create a structural racist system that legitimizes disenfranchisement and discrimination today. So reparations are defined as the process of repairing, healing, and restoring those injured because of their group identity and in violation of their fundamental human rights by governments, corporations, institutions, and families. So what we're seeing here is that violations are not only occurring by governments, however, it's being trickled down in, um, to corporations, institutions, and families. And therefore, they should be proportional to the gravity of the violations and harm suffered. So reparations are necessary because research shows that black people still feel the effects of slavery today through the structurally racist system. Racism and discrimination is correlated with the violence, disparities in health, housing segregation, increasing wealth gaps, differences in environmental outcomes, and in unjust policing and law enforcement practices. HR 40 is a bill that would commission a committee of 15 members to research and assess the impact of slavery and discrimination in the U.S. from 1619 to present. It will also develop a reparations proposal to give to Congress. So here we're going to discuss briefly the climate or reparations for Black Americans. I'm going to talk specifically about members of government in the public health community, and then we could get into you can see the rest later on your own. Um, so members of government, there hasn't been much said by presidents or um, presidents, presidential candidates on 
their support for or against reparations for black Americans. Um, however, the first reparations attempt made was after the Civil War with the 40 acres and a mule policy, which never went into effect. At the state level, we do see some progress, specifically in California, which developed a task force to assess slavery and its impact on black populations. And for the public health community, there's been lim limited engagement of the public health community regarding reparations. The earliest research surrounding the effects of racism on health was written by Rodney Hood in 2001, who called on the public health community and the med medical community as well to engage in the conversation regarding reparative justice to, um, to address um, health disparities. Some scholars do argue that the public health attempts to address racism, such as the social determinants of health, are not effective because they do not um, do not specifically state that structural racism is the root cause of health disparities. So here's the um, results section of my capstone. It was found that um, the Black Americans would be the main population affected. However, this will impact the entire population. The proposed length to implement is 18 months and the payer will be the federal government. Um, it was determined that the cost of the federal government is unknown. Um, while $20 million will be allocated to the commission to accomplish the set goals and duties to rate the cost to the government is challenging because for one, there hasn't been a commission to study um, the effects of slavery to this degree and the effect it has on black people today. From 1619 to now, it hasn't been done and there hasn't been a commission similar to this before. And so there's no way to really compare um, the, the cost um, and how this number was even established is unknown. The CBO and the bill doesn't provide much insight into how money is supposed to be used. And so more research is just needed and an expense breakdown could help um, to assess the financial impact later on. The political feasibility was determined to be low medium and the health impact is medium. So just the key findings, clarity on the bill is necessary to ensure that there is transparency and stakeholder involvement in the development of the reparations proposal. I think community engagement is key to this um, commission specifically because you're discussing a whole population and the effects that history continues to have um, on this population today. Um, social norms and political ideologies pose a threat to the success of the HR 40 bill. And available information regarding the budget makes it hard to assess the true impact the cost to implement HR 40 will have on the government. So in conclusion, HR 40 could be key to gathering evidence to educate the government and the public on the impact of slavery and discrimination, as well as developing a reparations proposal for co Congress to implement. Um, structural flaws in the paper does pose a threat to the health impact that it intends to have. However, um, the HR 40 bill could be the push needed to ignite the conversation on reparations for descendants of informally enslaved Africans and Black Americans in the U.S. Um, thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed.